Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. So, so for persons to now spread videos and spread whatever they want to spread mm. without actually looking at the numbers mm. is grossly, grossly incompetent and is doing your own people a disservice. Your people one, are one of dying. The, one of these doctors that are being spread like wildfire, his name is Dr. Roshad Buttar, right? Okay. And and like like I like I said, I'm just a simple guy, right? So, so one of the things that he's saying is that the coronavirus is uh, it's 5G. It's only meant because of 5G, right? And the epidemic is not real. And mm -hmm. I'm looking at this guy and I'm listening to him, and he's a doctor. And I'm saying to myself that, well, he's not a frontline doctor. He's not a frontliner, and he's not in the, the, the hood, you know what I mean? But he's speaking for all of us, right? And I'm looking at this guy, he's saying about 5G, and I'm just thinking just logically, like, okay, is 5G in India? Is 5G in Pakistan? Is 5G in, you know, like all these places that are hit hard, Iran, you know, is, do they have 5G? In, or that's all I'm, right. that's what I'm saying in my head. I'm, just, I'm like, how are people eating this up? Even Muslim channels are spreading this. Muslim channels, yeah. big Muslim channels are spreading this, right? So anyway, I want I want to get your thoughts on. No, on you're this. right. You're absolutely right. And I think I think what is what what is that it does a huge disservice mm -hmm. to us actually being able to impact those who need to be impacted because these videos are being spread to them, mm -hmm. and persons who want to take the necessary precautions are being told, no, no, don't listen, man. It's all mm -hmm. it's all fake. Mm -hmm. All fake is not is not true. There's no such thing going on, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Yet, yet, right across the board. In fact, there is a uh, sister. I think her name is Dua Dua Adib. I think is her name, and she writes in Chicago. Mm -hmm. The first 100 deaths. I believe it's in Chicago. Can you guess mm -hmm. how many of them were were were, were blacks? Of the first hundred deaths? I don't know how many. <laughs> 70. Bro. Woof. 70. Bro. In in areas where African Americans, mm -hmm. and another key thing I'll tell people is sometimes when you read some of these studies, another way in which people of color are described is non-Hispanic blacks. Mm -hmm. See a study that says non-Hispanic blacks. Mm -hmm. Talking about you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Talking about me, right? So yeah. it's important for people to be able to decipher a lot of these information, right? Mm -hmm. So right across different states where African Americans are 12% of the population, mm -hmm. they're dying at a rate of 30 and 40%. Mm -hmm. These aren't made up numbers. These are mm -hmm. actual numbers. Now, as we look at numbers, one of the things that I find so strange in persons who are so quick to dismiss the coronavirus numbers mm -hmm. is their will to accept the influenza numbers. Mm. <laughs> so they'll say the influenza virus yeah. killed 60,000 people. Mm -hmm. And the coronavirus, okay, it kills 60,000 people. Mm -hmm. They're both the same. <laughs> what they don't tell you is this. Yeah. When you go to the CDC and I ask everyone, everything that I'm saying, mm -hmm. don't just take my word for it. Yeah. I'm going to tell you and I'm going to tell you where to go and get it. I'm going to quote you dates and times and people's names so that you don't go, well, he didn't tell us the detail or whatever. Mm -hmm. The CDC said on their website, mm -hmm. the numbers we're giving you for the influenza deaths mm -hmm. are not actual numbers. Mm -hmm. They are estimated numbers. For the flu. For the flu. Wow. Well, the numbers you are getting for coronavirus mm -hmm. are the actual, actual numbers. numbers. Meaning, if mm -hmm. I tell you, Mm. 50 people died in New York. 50 people died in New York. Yeah. Did the CDC say we estimate 50 people died in New York? Mm -hmm. They probably saw 10 actual deaths, mm. but they estimated 50. Why did they estimate 50? Mm -hmm. Because, and they use mathematical um, algorithms. They use mathematical algorithms. Mm -hmm. And essentially, what they're saying is a lot of people, when by the time they get to the hospital, are not tested for the flu. Mm -hmm. 
but they were exhibiting symptoms that were flu-like. Mm. So guess what? Those guess what? That that death is counted as flu-related, and mm. nobody says, "Hey, how can you count that as the flu? That's that's <laughs> not the flu. They died of something else." No, we take those numbers, yeah, and yeah, we're yeah. willing to accept those numbers. But now comes coronavirus. Mm -hmm. doing even more decimation because mm -hmm. this is not estimated numbers. If you estimated the amount of people that died from coronavirus, it wouldn't be the number we're seeing now. It's mm -hmm. got to be more. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's got to be more. We are, so we are comparing apples to oranges. It doesn't even make any sense. Mm -hmm. The actual number, whenever you see them quote 61,000 flu deaths, the actual numbers, the max, max mm -hmm. is 15,000. Max. Wow. wow. So the max mm -hmm. that can, that, uh, of the people who died is 15,000, at mm -hmm. most 16,000. But they're estimating that when you look at the hospital records, mm -hmm. somebody would have come into the emergency room, have, was having flu like symptoms. Mm -hmm. And because of these flu like symptoms, the emergency room physician says, okay, well, otherwise you're fine. Mm -hmm. So we're going to tell you, go home. Get a lot, drink a lot of vitamin C, take your Tylenol, get a lot of fluids. If any problems, you can come back. Mm -hmm. If that person within two weeks now comes back worsening um, respiratory failure and they die, guess what they died of? The flu. The flu. <laughs> no one is challenging that. Mm -hmm. But they're going to turn around and challenge the actual COVID numbers and you're listening to them? Why would you listen to them? Mm -hmm. What is an estimate? What is the actual number, number yeah. it's not comparable in the least mm -hmm. and so something is decimating our community mm -hmm. and you want to walk around oh i went in front of the hospital and i didn't see a lot of people yes because they're inside the hospital <laughs> we're going to be treating people outside the hospital what is, my brother what do you come on bro what are you talking about yeah <laughs> what's happening and what people don't understand is most hospitals have what's called surge capacity mm -hmm. so in the case because the beauty of the american medical system and we, and we have to we have to speak facts and everything mm -hmm. is that they learn from past experiences mm -hmm. in some situations because mm -hmm. you see some things <laughs> you're like what yeah. is going on why are we still doing this but in yeah. some situations, we got to be honest, they learn from past experiences. Mm -hmm. And they looked at the 1918 pandemic. I mean, and trust me, that's a whole different story altogether. Because mm -hmm. that the 1918 flu pandemic killed more people than World War I. Wow. Soldiers that died in World War I died from the flu pandemic. Mm -hmm. Right? So, but we'll come, we'll come back to that another time. Mm -hmm. Essentially, hospitals have learned. Mm -hmm. And they actually, they do trial runs. Mm -hmm. They actually say, well, okay, if a flu is, if, if, if we're supposed to hit by a pandemic, what are we going to need? What are we going to project? How many ventilators that we, do we need? People look at uh, people that are being progressive in their planning and they say, see, mm. they were planning for it to come. No! <laughs> you it, bro! Like, <laughs> like, we don't do that and that's our problem. Yeah. <laughs> proactive. So we see somebody else proactive. Yeah. A lot of, rather than learning from proactivity, which mm -hmm. is what our sunnah teaches us, yeah, we go, yeah. oh, man, see? It was a setup. It no, a the setup. sunnah calls you <laughs> to be proactive. Mm -hmm. You can't get bitten from the same hole what? Twice. Twice, yeah. <laughs> why, why, why do we think, why do we think the, 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 the hadith is saying that? Mm -hmm. The Prophet Allah is saying to you, you got to be proactive. Yeah. Have the same thing happened to you again? Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. And so this is the reality. Mm -hmm. And people have to understand this. Mm -hmm. The second thing that's going on now is this whole issue of it's not true, but the way it's spread and so on. Mm -hmm. I want people to, to look up something. And, and, and this one touches me specifically because I've been in recent time, I've been doing a lot of history um, studies in terms of medical history, you know, mm -hmm. the history of medicine, because it's absolutely fascinating. Mm -hmm. And what you find is that it took us a while in medical sciences to really understand disease process. Mm -hmm. However, there were glimpses of hope in different time periods. Mm -hmm. One of the most amazing glimpses of, of hope was during the golden era of Islam. Mm -hmm. There's an individual, and many of us who know him has Ibn Sina. Yeah. 
right? And his name is Abu um, Ali Al Hussein, um, Ibn Abdullah, Ibn Al Hassan, Ibn, mm. Al, Ibn Ali, Ibn Sina. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, his father is not even um, Sina. Yeah. I think his great grandfather yeah. is Sina. He, he's, he's like the, the, the father of modern medicine. He, and he wrote a book called mm. um, Kanun Fi Tib, The mm. Canon of Medicine. Yes. Five volume masterpiece mm. that Europe was using until the 15th and 16th century. Yeah. In his masterpiece, mm -hmm. he was saying, because they had tuberculosis that was going around at that time, he's saying, I'm thinking this thing is spread mm. by close contact. Mm. He's already thinking, that there's got to be something, because another theory that was around in that time is a theory called the miasma theory, M-I-A-S-M-A. -S -S -A. You can go look it up. Mm. What the miasma theory says is, it is the, the foul stench that mm. comes from rotten bodies and... Um, you know, dirty areas, that stench comes up in the air mm. and that's what's spreading diseases. Mm. And scientists, medical scientists held on to that like wildfire mm -mm. until there was a cholera outbreak in London. Mm. And at that time, one of the doctors at that time said, what's strange is if people are getting things being spread to them, through the air, why are they vomiting and having diarrhea? That don't make any sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then he found that there was a water well mm -hmm. that was centrally located to where all the cholera cases were. Mm -hmm. And he convinced the authorities at that time, mm -hmm. I think something's coming from this water well. Mm -hmm. Shut it down. Mm -hmm. They shut it down. What happened to their numbers? It dropped. Yes. Then came the microscope mm -hmm. and um, Van Hoek and, and, and Pasteur, and they're looking at the microscope and going, whoa, we're seeing these things, animal cues and bacteria looking stuff. Mm -hmm. So what did they start doing? They were using mice at that time. Yes. And they would inoculate some mice and they go, whoa, they got something. Mm -hmm. And they now were able to directly correlate. Mm -hmm. And hence we have what's called. Inami. Yes. Inami. Yes. Inami. Yes. Inami. Yes. Inami. Yes, I love you. Inami. Yes. Inami? Yes. Inami? Yes. Inami? Yes. Inami? Yes. Only you.